1977 Tony Award winning actor in the play Comedians and the winner for Miss Saigon in 1991, Jonathan Price. I'm here to present the Tony Award for this year's outstanding play. But before I do that, I'd like to explain a little more about the process that brought our four nominated plays to this point. It all begins with the audition. And for our first nominated play, Torgir Grau's The Song of Jacob Zulu, a young actor, K. Todd Freeman, came in to read for the part of Jacob Zulu, the teenage boy who is slowly transformed into a murderer by South Africa's violent system of apartheid. Now, Ken, I would like you to read from uh, Jacob's final scene in the play. I took a bus to Shaka's Rock by myself. I, I had never been there before. When I saw all the white children, I swear, all I could see in my head were the little black babies that were killed in the air raid in Mozambique. When I saw their parents, I could, I could see the white pilots in their planes and the fascist policemen that tortured me. I could see the police that beat us, the police that gassed us. They have taken my family from me. They have taken my dreams from me and my life. And my deadline was coming up and I, I had this fire in my chest. I couldn't breathe and so I go to the mall there and I see the sign for South African Airways and I hear in my head what they said to us up north. They told us, they said, you must bring the war into every white home in South Africa. But they also said, they also told us we must not harm civilians and I didn't know what to do. The process continues. For the second nominated play, Wendy Wasserstein's The Sisters Rosenzweig, the actors, Jane Alexander, Madeleine Kahn, and Robert Klein, have assembled around the table for the first reading. All right, listen up, everybody. We're going to begin. Uh, now, this is a comedy about family and identity. Now, Mervyn Kent, uh, a furrier from New York, played by Robert, uh, has a healthy grasp on who he is. Uh, Sarah Good, played by Jane Alexander, is from Brooklyn and has reinvented herself as a London banker. Now this scene begins as Mervyn has arrived unannounced at Sarah's London townhouse while Sarah's awa awaiting the arrival of her sister, Gorgeous, played by Madeleine Kahn. Gorgeous is leading the Temple Bethel Sisterhood on a tour of the Crown Jewels. Now, as this scene begins, Robert, uh, excuse me, Merv and Sarah have just met. I'll read the stage directions, begin when ready. You're looking at your watch. Would you prefer that I leave? Oh, I'm just wondering what time my daughter's coming home. Relax. I had three children that never came home. They turned out fine. <laughs> I understand you're a brilliant banker. And you are a, a furrier, Mr. Kent? Well, I was a showbiz and novelty furrier. Now I am the world leader in synthetic animal protective covering. <laughs> Mr. Kent. Today is my 54th birthday, and my sister, Gorgeous, is due shortly from Newton, Massachusetts. I can't believe your father named you, Sarah, and your other sister, Gorgeous. What does your husband call you? Oh, my second husband is on his fifth wife. My first I've lost track of. I uh, doubt very much if there'll be a third. So you've closed shop. She exits. Merv pours himself a drink and walks over to the record player. How about a little music, Sarah? Oh, I'm glad to see you like the Broadway shows. Which one has look, look, look to the rainbow? Gorgeous enters with her suitcases. Vivian's rainbow. You must be gorgeous. We were just talking about you. And how I got my name. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? I just met your sister, Sarah. Oh, my sister's fabulous. They really are such funsy people. I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say your sister Sarah is funsy. Maybe you should marry her. I only spend five minutes with her. So what? Some people know at first sight. People call me from the Massachusetts Turnpike because they have just met someone at a rest stop and have fallen in love. And you speak to these people? <laughs> have you ever been to Boston? Well, if you ever listen to the radio when you're there, then you would know that everyone calls Dr. Gorgeous. Call Dr. Gorgeous, ring, ring, ring. Call Dr. Gorgeous, ring, ring, ring. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dr. Gorgeous. How can I help you? Isn't that great? <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> I just have the best time. 
Your husband must be very proud. He is thrilled. <laughs> and so supportive. I have only one more question. When did you become a doctor? You heard of Dr. Pepper? Yeah. So I'm Dr. Gorgeous. The, uh, the play is now on its feet, as we say. The actors are without script now, and even in the rehearsal hall, the scenes become more vivid as the actors find their characters and breathe into them a life of their own. They've now added movement to the process. Although in our third nominated play, Frank McGuinness is someone who'll watch over me, not too much movement. Actors David Dukes and Michael York play prisoners who are chained to a wall in a jail cell in Beirut. Wait, now, Michael, this is the scene where you try to relive one of England's greatest sporting occasions and try to turn the bare cell into the greens of Wimbledon. What are you up to? I am reliving the 1977 Wimbledon Ladies Final. Virginia Wade of Great Britain against Betty Stover of Holland. Virginia's going for a British win and the excitement's mounting. Virginia's playing to win and Virginia's going to win. That's unfair. That's history. Or oh, to hell with history. I'm rooting for Betty. Who's serving? I am. Take it away, Virginia. Another ace, my game! What do you mean? I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I appeal to the umpire. You cannot be serious. Are you blind? Are you stupid? This is a pit. God damn it. I think you'll find John McEnroe was not involved in the 1977 ladies' final. What do you mean? And finally, we arrive on stage in full production. For the fourth nominated play, Tony Kushner's Angels in America, Millennium Approaches, those last rehearsals held for the costume and scenic and lighting artists are when the play comes into focus as an entire creative work. Kathleen, Ron, let's uh, pick it up with the speech where Roy Cohn is addressing his doctor. <clears throat> and since this is the end of Act uh, One, let's time the music cues. All right, quiet, everybody. Ron? This disease... Syndrome! It, whatever? It afflicts mostly homosexuals and drug addicts. Mostly. Hemophiliacs are also... Homosexuals addicts. and drug addicts. So why are you implying that I am... What are you implying, Henry? Roy, I'm I... not a drug addict. Oh, come on, Roy. What? What? Come on, Roy, what? Oh, you think I'm a junkie, Henry? You see tracks? This is absurd. Say it. Say what? Say, Roy Cohn, you are a... Roy. You are a... Go on. Not Roy Cohn, you're a drug fiend. Roy Marcus Cohn, you are a... Go on, Henry, it starts with an H. I'm not going with to... With an H, it. Henry, and it isn't hemophiliac. Come on! What are you Don't doing? Don't say here? it! I mean it! Say, Roy Cohn, you are a homosexual. And I will proceed systematically to destroy your reputation and your practice <coughs> and your career in New York State, Henry. Which you know I can do.